Hello, friends. Good morning. Last week, with me having a cold, uh, we were talking about me struggling uh, under such conditions with feelings of guilt because you don't get to do stuff. You have to stay in bed. You have to lie low. Um, and it's very difficult to tick off boxes um, and say, all right, I've completed this. Um, and in a culture where you have to be productive and effective, that's often a challenge mm -hmm. when we become ill or incapacitated for whatever reason. Um, then feelings of guilt often surface. Mm -hmm. So we were talking... And, and of, of uh, uselessness. Yes. Uh, issues around your identity. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing what, what comes to the surface. Mm -hmm. This week we want to focus on issues that you might struggle with um, or that you find difficult. Mm -hmm. um, because we were talking about that. Um, I thought it's only me who <laughs> is um, useless, uh, <laughs> but uh, and and it touches on the whole issue also of perfection in spirituality and in our religious life. Mm. Uh, yeah, because if we are quite honest. We work with a paradigm paradigm of perfection. Yes, we should be focused. We should be yes. yeah, sinless, focused, perfect, blameless. And it's sad that that crept into the conversation over time because that isn't gospel. Mm. That is not what God expects from us. That's not the message that Jesus proclaimed. But somehow we brought perfection into the picture and we strive to be perfect. Mm. And if we're not perfect, we uh, uh, are very strict with ourselves. Yeah, cut ourselves up. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so coming back to what you often struggle with, um, a stumbling block for you. Uh, what would you describe uh, as such a stumbling block? Mm. I think that quote by Mary O'Reilly. Uh, O'Malley. O'Malley. Mary O'Malley. What's in the way is the way. Mm. It's very really applicable here. Because I realize that um, um, it is something that is very important in my life as a potter, as a creative person, as 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 having a career that, that has to... But my creativity is is constantly on call and um and it's been like this and i don't think it's it's unique i think all creatives struggle with a very strong very strict inner critic on their own work on um what they put out um, but it's the whole problem of being able to work authentically um and by that i mean that you can step out of the way in terms of how we see creativity as being a unique channel where these unlimited possibilities can flow through us. When, I'm, when it's to do with clay, then the unlimited uh, or the limitless possibilities that clay can offer, that that can flow through me and use my unique way of doing it to, to bring beauty or, or utility to uh, into creation so it's a constant struggle to have the stance of um, I want to say like James Finley the, the stance of least resistance mm. to 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 not to not get into the way of the flow mm. to not use to not allow my ego to get scared to say uh, what will sell what are people buying at the moment what's the colors of the season um uh, is this going to be popular mm, um, mm. there's a budget i need to put out so much as soon as those things come in my my creativity gets completely blocked because um it it 
it doesn't allow for for um, the the playfulness the the and and I think that's something that you put so well just now. Maybe you can just say that again. But to to be able to 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 work from from a more free place. Mm, mm. But the ego will tell you that all those things like budget and productivity, those are very important stuff. Yes, yes. Because I think what we have to realize is that the ego isn't spiteful. The ego isn't evil. The ego is scared. Mm. The ego is trying to protect me. The ego is telling me, I see you want to just play with clay today, but I have to tell you, um, the ESCOM account is due. Mm. So, um, and it, and it's almost like like having this scared, insecure child inside of you that needs to be um, put uh, or, or need to be assured of um, what you're doing and that it's safe. And and that's a constant battle. It's a constant um, thinking of ways to. I don't want to say outsmart the ego. Mm. But to to pacify the ego, to allow it to just settle, and it's mostly in, of course, in the logical side of our brains where all these mm. these thoughts come up. So it's it's it's, um, and it's difficult for me. I know the answers. I know how to go about it. But it's as if that part just when I open the studio door, um, it starts. The previous night, I'm already saying. Today I need to finish so many plates, uh, two vases, and and I and I push to do that. Mm. Um, so I don't start the day out, the working day out, with the right intention. Mm. Mm. And and it's more and more. Uh, I I don't know now who the quote is from, but we'll put it on the blog. That says people don't buy what you make. They buy, buy why you make it. Mm. So what is my why? If I cannot, if, if my why is because it has to sell, mm. then the work is not going to carry the authentic mark mm. Um, mm. that I will know. Mm. Mm. I, I can see it. Mm. Uh, a telltale sign of the ego being active is when a phrase pops up like it's fine to play with the clay and so on but we have to return to reality and to real work and real work when and when real. when the word reality comes into play you can almost be certain the ego is uh, mm. um, mm. uh, is active there Mm. Um, and it's not like you are ignoring ego but or ignoring reality but there's um and again this boils down to trusting god in the process mm. to surrendering to that that bigger picture of how things can um can turn out because there's a there's an unpredictability in it mm. and i think that even more uh, makes the ego very, very insecure yeah. and scared. Yeah. It wants to control. It wants to be uh, the boss. It wants mm. to, in the end of at the end of the day, say, "Well, I did, did this, 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 and I even got to." Mm. Um, so it's a very strong. There's a very strong, I think, mindset um, conditioning um, that you're fighting against all the time in your head. Mm. 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 And when you struggle with this, uh, do you know when you are creating from an authentic place? I do know. I do. Um, often it's, it's not so conscious in the sense of I will be busy and I will be doing something and um, I like what I see. And when the product is finally finished, um, what usually is a telltale sign is if, I take something from the kiln and I put it down and I think, wow, but this is beautiful. Mm. And it and it's, it sort of stands apart from me being the one who made it. It's not like I'm going, wow, I made this. Yo, I'm good. It's, somebody else can come and say, but this is beautiful, beautiful. And I'll say, isn't it? Mm. 
and it's not being arrogant it's it sort of almost surprises me that i that that this came from mm. from my hands mm. so there's a there's a, a um a, a non-attachment to it yes in a sense. Uh, that's telling also if it's something like the little bowl i have on the the plank over my bath with a little bowl that i make that i use for soap and sponges and that i cannot stop looking at mm. it just and i see it every day but every time i see it there's just something about it that just um just touches me on a on a on a level it's mm. just the it, it's not perfect it's but it has that something mm. Mm. so i was thinking that maybe i don't know if it will help but I'm going to try to, to show you some examples and let's see if it if it um, if you can see the difference so this bowl I'm going to show it like this um, is just a pinch bowl and I wanted to try out an oxide that I didn't know well so it was actually just a piece of waste clay that was lying around and I thought okay let me just make something but this was not done with uh with the intention of creating something beautiful so it it really doesn't please me um uh it, it it it's just not it so so that's the one and then um this is a, also a pinch pinch bowl that i made into a teacup so i made a set of these ones and um i so enjoyed this i really so enjoyed it and the the glaze and the oxides that i used just brings out the imperfections in, in my fingerprints so this for me is made from essence and and i don't know about you if you can see the difference uh for me it's not that this one it, it could be rough like this and it would be from essence mm. But but there's there's a difference in intention here, yeah. um, and um, yeah, I don't know if it makes sense. Mm. So it's a very abstract thing. Mm. It it's not in something specific or in perfection or in. But there's it's it's almost like an energy, almost like a, mm. a, a like it conveys something of a of a. Um, I don't want to say a pride, but a but a, a pride of being. A, 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 mm. And Hopkins uh, used the term inscape. Yes, yes, uh, it's got inscape. It's got inscape. Yeah. It, it it has an identity. Yeah. And it is almost it 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 fills that space, and everything around it takes on the shape mm. of that thing. Mm. Yeah, that's well. Put. Yeah. <coughs> Mm. what helps you to get to a place of authenticity <laughs> um i mean because it is mm. something that you've been struggling now mm. for years mm. but there are certain things that's really helpful yes yes and like i say i know the answers i don't practice it enough so i i and i think that's also why i struggle because um I have not yet come to the place where I'm able to incorporate it into my work day mm. to make it really uh, uh, something that I need to do before I start creating because it will put me in a different mindset. So I know what it is. It is to, to apply it. Mm. So any um, little exercise, it has to do with playfulness. Mm. It has to do with switching off the left, the logical brain. And allowing the the right the more creative side just to to loosen up a little bit so any exercise for me uh, would be something like um drawing uh doodles uh, doodles uh just coming in and saying i'm going to take a piece of clay and this first piece of clay i'm just going to make a little sculpture for our granddaughter um uh or what I'm now doing is not important. So I put no pressure on myself in terms of it, it's pure play. Mm. It's pure experiment. Experimenting also helps 
saying, if I don't like this, I can throw it away. Mm. So that also helps. Um, sometimes, and I often use it in the workshops, to work, to take a piece of clay and to actually close my eyes and to make something. Mm. So um, I often use it. And the other day I had a group of children here and they categorically told me that I was lying. Mm. <laughs> You can't make anything beautiful without looking at it. Yeah, I was trying to put across this, that you need, you, your, your hands know, and you don't need your eyes always. You don't need to need, use your brain so much. Just let it go. So I made this little elephant, I made with closed eyes. And I actually had to make another one for these children, so that they could actually see that, that it is possible. And they were amazed. This the process really can be repeated. The process can be repeated. It wasn't a once-off. <laughs> so that helps me tremendously. Just to close my eyes and just sit with a piece of clay. It's almost like a little meditation practice. Mm. And uh, sometimes it happens that it becomes what it wants to become. Sometimes I decide to make a little elephant or draw a pinch bowl. So, but I don't do it nearly enough mm. um, to to get me into a place where it automatically I can kick into the flow. Mm. Listening to an audio book helps you as yes, well. Yes, yes. Good that you remember that because that is another way that I switch off the logical brain because the logical brain gets pulled into the book and I listen to the book and it it's, it's like the ego goes, okay, what's the most important here? I can't uh, attend to both things here. So I'll listen to the book and you just carry on with your hands. That's not important anyway. Mm. So, and that really helps me specifically when I'm doing sculpture work. Um, that helps me. It frees me up. Mm. So that's a, that's a very important one. Mm. 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 Every aspect of our lives actually where we have that sense of trying to control the outcome. Mm. Um, things being steered in a definite way mm. and not being free enough to give over to flow. Um, that's a telltale sign of the ego being active. Mm. And, the, and the critic, the inner critic yeah. that wants to make you see sense all the time. Mm. Mm. So, uh, work in progress. Um, the what does Matthew Fox say? The biggest. Uh, yeah, the most beautiful thing, the most beautiful thing a potter creates, is the potter. And part of that create creative process is to see where the ego is active, um, and to get into a more free space. Mm, mm. Of creativity. Good. Lovely to share this with you. I uh, hope you have a lovely week. And and do let us know what you struggle with. Mm. We can have. Uh, we can carry on with this. Type of problem. Uh, for a long time. Mm. Bye bye. Goodbye.